Hi everybody, welcome to Gabby's studio. Today I'm going to show you how to do some sun painting. Essentially it's just um, using some Ecoline inks which I've used before, applying some objects onto the inks and then taking it out into the sun to do its thing. So I have some um, Archer's watercolour paper here, it's 120 uh, GSM. It's a little bit smoother than the normal stuff that I use, so I'm going to have give it a go. I haven't done this technique before, but I've read a little bit about it. So I'm just going to tape it down just to tack it so that the paper doesn't move. Uh, just with some, I use this um, low tack masking tape you can get at any hardware shop. And um, it's called washi. Usually it's what painters use. Anyway, just on the corners there. And I have some water in a water bottle, in a just a spray bottle. You don't have to buy a spray bottle, you can just use an old, old one that you have. I'm going to spritz it. Oops, get these missed. All right, I think I've got it. It's got a bit of resistance there, I'm not sure why. And then I'm going to use some Ecoline inks. Um, if you don't have inks, at home, you can use um, even food colouring will do the trick. So, just going to pop some more tape down so it's nice and flat. And the objects I've chosen today are just some dried gum leaves I picked up on my walk this morning and thought this might make an interesting effect. Okay, so just um, with one of these hake brushes which are great for watercolours it's a west art series hake number one um, or any brush really even a household brush will do the trick okay just then i'm going to use a smaller brush spread it a little bit and just strip some colours through it it's a lovely um apple green and as you can see, the colour just disperses, does its own thing. I like working with this sort of stuff, um, and so do students. I'm a teacher, so we often play around with lots and lots of techniques to create a body of work. And it's amazing, you know, lots of happy accidents and lead us down a different creative pathway, which is really lovely. Um, okay. I'll just wash that out. It's still quite wet. Now you could put another colour. I'm just going to put a touch of, I think this might, mm, might be orange. I actually wanted yellow. Um, nope, don't have any yellow. So I might try a little bit of different green. It's a phalo green. Oh, no, it's a deep green actually, this one. Just a bit. Okay, as you can see, it's already starting to dry because the colours aren't spreading as much. I don't want too much of that colour. Okay, so what I might do while that's happening, you can even get a straw and blow it around or move it around if you want. Okay, so now I'm going to I'm going to try this. I don't know how it's going to work with um, dried leaves, but apparently, if you leave the object in the sun, so I'm also going to try it with some fresh leaves. I'll just leave that because they're a little bit dry that may not work as effectively because I can see with the fresh leaves the actual ink is pooling around the object
It's a good idea if, if the actual object that you place is either heavy or is, is fairly flexible, like a, a fresh leaf, um, and it sticks to the actual paint. Use those ones because they're a little bit too dry. So I might I'm curious to see if I tape it down whether it will because they're coming because they're too stiff and dry. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape just to secure the back of the leaf and see if that will help. And then I have to take this out to the sun and come back in a couple of hours' time when it's actually dry and see what happens. So it's all experimental. Some things work, some things don't. We'll wait and see. to have stuck down. No, it's still lifting. Okay. Might require something more than the low tack tape to stick it down. So I might try just ordinary sellotape. See what happens. So if I put it down like that and just I might rip the paper but Okay. So essentially the what will happen is that the um, liquid should evaporate and leave a little bit of an imprint. It's almost bleaching it back in. So I'm going to see what happens with this. It might not work. I have done it before and we've had situations where it has worked and other times where it hasn't worked. So I'm just going to tape that down there and come back to it. I'll take it outside in the sun. for at least until it dries, so it'll be late afternoon. Whoops, that paper's not sticking down. It's only not sticking down because it's um, it's still wet, like so. So I might see if I can add a little bit more color around the edges right before it dries completely. And that might be able to help it. So it's not meant to, work, to be a complete white imprint. It's just creating a subtle effect. So I suspect that the paper will bleach out in the sun and um, just leave a subtle effect of an imprint, which is what we want. And you can work back into it later. And as you can see, that tealy green, which is called deep green, has... Um, dried up quite a nice green in amongst the um, green that I have here. Interesting effects just in here happening with the tape. That could be quite interesting too if we just tape things down and allowed the, um, the inks to work their way through. I might try a little bit of the dark one just to see since it's still wet. Drop it in a little bit.
Okay, I'm going to leave it now and see what happens. Let's put a little bit more. The trouble is you never know when you finish. You keep going and going. Sometimes I overwork things. And I'm curious to find out whether the sun bleaching is going to actually work on this piece. It has done in the past, but we'll wait and see. So you can do this with all sorts of things. You know, the best thing probably to do, and I might try another one, is um, buy a stencil and um, do the same thing with the stencil that's um, laser cut. So you can put your inks down, you have a stencil, pop the stencil down while it's still wet and then take it into the sun and hopefully that should do the trick. Thanks for listening. I'll be back in a few hours time to add to it and see um, whether the technique has helped. Well, I've waited an hour. It dried quick, it was pretty hot outside. And um, you can see the effects of the technique taking place. So my suggestion is if you're to do this, not to use dry leaves. They didn't take as easily, just to have a look here. So basically the objects have to be stuck down in order for it to work. And the best is probably fresh tender leaves for this particular technique. So I'm just going to peel some of it off. It's still a little bit damp, but you get the idea of the impressions of the leaves with the ink. It just pulls around. I probably could have left it at even um, not gone around it and it would have been a little bit more subtle. Like this one up here is a bit more subtle. You can see the leaves prints. This one here, that's one, a really lovely one. So without even touching it, it's turned out. You can see the subtlety of the lines. This has got those, what they call cauliflowers in um, watercolours, but they can't, they look quite nice, I don't mind them. So if you've got a little bit of pooling happening, which I was a bit impatient and um, just grab, and just pick it up with a paper towel. You can see it. There you go. So this is painting, sun painting basically. There are little um, inks and things that you can buy and you can do all sorts of things where you put an image, you run an image through a um, piece of acetate paper on a photocopier and then you paint a blue solution and then you expose it to the sun and where it's dark, where the actual image is, the positive image, it transfers it as a negative image onto the paper. That can be quite a lot of fun. Um, it's not exactly the cheapest thing to do, but I want to give it a go. It'll be great. So I often use these little window frames. And um, this sort of thing you can make a lot of cards with as well. So just having a look at that. That's a nice little impression. You can work back into it if you want to. And you can just play with all sorts of different leaves and different colours to get different effects. So thanks for listening. Just another one of those techniques that I like to play with. And uh, next time, I might try something else. Give us a like if you like what you saw.